for some volleyball tonight from the Galen Center here in L.A. We welcome you to Pac-12 Women's Volleyball and Pac-12 Networks tonight. Got a great one for you. Number 10, Oregon, taking on number 18, USC. And we welcome you inside the Galen Center along with Kevin Wong. I'm Josh Lewin. When we were here last weekend, Kevin, there was a lot of gloom and doom talk around USC. What a difference a week makes. They were talking about matches being must-win situations a week later. This is a team that's on a roll. Yep, and with uh, Samantha Bricio, the reigning player of the week, we know all about her. She's amazing. What else does USC have? We got to look to the, the burgeoning star on the right side. She's the freshman of the year. Last year, she's a first-team All-American. Emily Wanabu on the right side is the real deal. Coming back from an injury, playing her way into shape. As she improves, so will this USC team as well. And as for Oregon, Liz Brenner, a heck of a player. Heart and soul of the team, the senior leader. Everyone knows about the power game in the front row, the big swings, the big spikes. What's more impressive in the back row where she puts up libero type numbers on defense as well. Oregon lost to UCLA a few days ago and now trying to get it right in Southern California, taking on a resurgent USC team led by Samantha Bricio. We are back to begin in just a moment. Women's Volleyball, presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. USC started out 0-3 in conference, but now the Trojans have ripped off three wins in a row, taking on number 10, Oregon, one of the most balanced teams you're gonna see in a women's volleyball here in the collegiate ranks. Starting lineup brought to you by Tachikara. And Liz Brenner, the outside hitter, is having a marvelous season. So is Martine Bettendorf, wearing number 18. You'll see her on your TV screen quite a lot tonight. And as for USC, now we've told you about Wanabu starting to step it up. Samantha Bricio is really their best player and one of the best players in all of the volleyball right now at the collegiate level, you figure, Kevin. We'll uh, get you to that USC lineup here presently. And uh, Bricio is the... Uh, the woman that we want to make sure that you know about, wearing number two from Guadalajara, Mexico. Hey, you look at these teams on paper and all the stats very similar. The big advantage for USC is the serving and of course the big advantage there, Samantha Bricio, one of, if not the best server in the nation up in that consideration, in that conversation. But put it to you this way, no one on Oregon's team has 17 to serve as aces this year. Bricio, had 14 last weekend for Mick Haley. And Mick, at 71 years old, came here to USC from the University of Texas. And when he left, the job went to the guy who's now coaching on the other side tonight. Jim Moore was actually recommended by Mick Haley to take over at UT. Jim Moore now has found his way from Austin to the Pac-12 as well. And Jim Moore is a bit of a I guess you could say he's, he's the volleyball whisperer, Kevin. Everywhere he's gone, <laughs> a once downtrodden program has bloomed on his watch. Really a turnaround specialist. You, the, the crazy stat is the four programs he's taken over, he has doubled the wins the next year, if you look cumulatively of the year before. Lauren Gillis gets it going. Well, as USC gets tons and tons of aces, more than anybody else in the Pac-12. Oregon trying to make sure early that they don't establish that here tonight. And, and really impressive early on this year, Bettendorf with her kill totals. Feathered over and dug out. Emily Young puts it up. Here that back line. USC gets it back. Ben North, another try, a pretty creative try, not going with the pass that hit. Yeah, typically, Liz Brenner is, is the carrier for this Oregon squad, but Bettendorf actually more kills, more attempts this year. See the series record, USC with a sweep here last year. Banged on down. Anna Schwer gets it done, the senior from Arcadia, California. Seen a lot of good things from the server. Alicia Ogum's on the, the back row. Seen the blocking, we've seen the hitting, but the serving too, pretty impressive. Blocks, <laughs> <laughs> not 
not something USC does that much of, really. Lauren Gillis tried for the kill shot, but it went long. Yep, these teams both know more for their offensive prowess than their defensive prowess. Pretty good defensive digging teams, but the block on both sides not really strengths. Serena Warner serves it. Now lefty kill shot wouldn't go for Emily Young. Whittingham's a libero, and she set it up nicely. Eventually, Schreier with the finish. Schreier's had a tough journey in her USC voyage, but really turning it on strong, hitting six percentage in the Pac-12 this year. Well struck as USC regains the lead. That's Haley Crone with the serve this time. Gillis diving, could not get it back over the net, so we're tied at three. See the step around move from Casey Nady. You're gonna see a lot of varied offense from the Oregon team. Actually something that Jim Moore prides himself in, being that offensive coordinator. Chelsea Ashen, native of Southern California with that serve for Oregon. Blocked back down. And not something you'd expect from Oregon. Ranked last in blocking in the Pac-12. A Casey Nady though, the native San Diegan. And her number's up big this year, really. One of the more improved players on the team. What'd you see? Underneath the net, but both sloppy team, uh, sloppy plays from both sides uh, of the court early on in this match. Now, so it's Oregon keeping the serve with Chelsea Ashen from Laguna Niguel, California. Amanda Benson, the libero for Oregon, and that one just shooting it past that end line. So USC will finally get the serve to Bricio, which is what they want. Twice, yeah. twice as many as uh, anybody else in the Pac-12 right now <laughs> right. when you talk about the Aces. I have four in the back, so I'm the Scraped the net, but went over. Bricio is the reigning player of the week, keep in mind. Mauricio will dig, and Wanabu with a smack to get it over. It's dug out of there by Benson. And now Gillis, but it's to Oregon. Ball hit into the antenna there, and if you're Oregon, you feel like you just dodged a bullet. Yeah. Now Mick Haley's gonna jump up and question the wisdom here. They're saying it hit the arm first, but it really looked like it hit that antenna into the arm and then out of yeah. bounds. You know, there's an urgency every single time when you're receiving serve to put it away, but there's a different set of urgency when you've got Samantha Bricio on the line because she is so very dangerous back there. And, and a reason why Mick Haley and the coaching staff would really push hard for this because it's a different situation when Bricio is back there. 54 service aces, Oregon State's Darby Reader is next in the conference at 27. And what, you know, take a look, this is a good slow-mo look, the perfect angle that the lines person's watching as well, and you see it hit the antenna first as it moves before it hits the block. Definitely the right call. Up so Oregon will serve now, and they rotate Chelsea Kiojo back there, transferred in this year from the University of Colorado, native Hawaiian. And she goes five foot three. They've got the five foot one Natalie Bookout Gonzalez as well, who can go on to the back line. Wanabu. Great job by Benson to go get it. And Bricio digs. Whistle before Bricio could finish. Double contact from Haley Crone, the senior setter. Very experienced setter. We've seen that a lot on the forward set for her. The back set's no problem at all, but. You'd think that would be the easier one, but we've seen that a few times over the last couple of weeks. There's Brenner with a big shot. Bricio hit it right towards her coach. 
And out of bounds. Eight to four, Oregon. They got out quickly at UCLA, too, a few days ago. Kevin just couldn't finish it. Right, and a lot of it was the Bricio lead scoring a lot of points from the service line. We just saw Oregon fighting it off in that first opportunity. To the net for Wanabu, who was able to jam it on down. Talked about Nwanabu. She had a very busy summer this year. She played on the collegiate national team, got called up to the, the national team, USA, a Team USA, and uh, all that reps, all that travel during the summer really might have led to the back injury she had. Now the Ducks now extend the lead here, going to 9-5. to five. Naya Crittenden coming into her home. Her numbers are up, hitting or blocking numbers up as well. We very physical player. That was Benson with the serve. And towards the back line, but beyond the back line. And USC a few times now has just been a little bit strong with that hit. And, and the mobility, the set location, not perfect. It's inside a little bit. And, and that's a ball that Nwanabu would have got her feet to and crushed last year. Still a little bit slower. The arm is fine, right? The arm's maybe better than ever. Crittenden. And now Wanabu again. Wanabu! Yeah, got the big arm, that's for sure. Talking to the, the Colorado coaches, she loves this cross court hit. You can see the angle. She's going to hit to the right side of your screen. That's where she always likes to hit. Colorado actually talking about maybe moving the block in against her and taking that away. No aces yet for SC in this first set. They do get the kill shot there. At this point against Utah, last time that they took the court, believe it or not, they had six aces at this point in the first <laughs> right. set. In a row, yeah. All those from Bricio. Interesting SC. I like this move from Mick Haley. Young is staying in as the setter. He's pulled out Crone. A little larger lineup here for USC. Wow. Well, that had some pretty good dip on it. It's blocked right back, though. And Oregon right to the net, blocking very well off the jump here. Big block on the outside, but you really got to like the opportunity set up by Nuanabu's serve. That, that was looking a lot like Bricio's uh -huh. serve, very similar. Not a true topspin, not a true floater. Saving the day there, though, is Crittenden. Borrowing the lyrics from a popular song of the day, they're, they're all about the ace. Right now, USC. <laughs> and the kill shot, too, on occasion. There's Ogums. The pride of Manitoba player of the year. She was there. She was an MVP as well. Missed everything in Manitoba, and that was straight down. Well, she really elevated, too, huh? Quick arm. Good jump. Yeah. Now Gillis turns it right back over. She's just a freshman. Potential off the charts. She's very good at the little things, and she has a great lineage, a great trajectory for future success. Liz Brenner all about current success, the senior from Portland with that serve for Oregon. Bricio hammers it. And the block not quite there for USC. Oregon out very, very nicely here at 13 to 8. Two things I love about that play for Oregon, the dig first by Brenner. We talked about libero-style defense. And on the other side, Shebby, only a freshman, being creative. Not a perfect set, not a perfect opportunity, taking some speed off of it. Brenner knifes it over. And it's pounded right down by Serena Warner. It's starting to get away from USC. To the point that Coach Haley wants to talk about it. Ducks 14 and USC 8. Oregon up 14 to 8. There's her do it all performer, Liz Brenner, on a different court. Right, she plays many different sports, wears many different hats. A little basketball, some softball, track and field. And to top it all off, she was a, a racquetball world champion as a junior. 
That's a, that's a lot of glory on a lot of different <laughs> right. topics right there. That's a, a do-it-all performer. Not really fair, right, to no. the rest of us? Don't be afraid to spread some of that out. Fourteen to eight, Oregon. Number ten, Oregon. Remember, they weren't ranked at the beginning of the season. That one a little bit wide, so it goes to fifteen to eight. And I guess I ask you: Is it what Oregon is doing right now, or what SC is not doing? SC right now? doesn't look as crisp as they looked last week. Last week they were on it; there was an urgency about it. This week they're they're not quite as sharp. Well, they've got a hitting percentage of 048 right now. Dug out by Benson. And Young keeps it hot for SC, needing a point here. Into the net, it's all Oregon right now. And now with the Ducks having designs on moving up from number 10. We can tell you that already the number one team is in the books with a win. I'd like to welcome those of you who have watched Stanford survive at Colorado. Number one almost went down tonight, but it did not happen. The Cardinal pull it out, and now if you're just joining us, here's Oregon, number 10 in the country, up 16 to nine at USC. A team that looked great last weekend, but Kevin Wong, not so much here to start tonight. And you've got to look at two categories for them tonight. The offense that's been humming along the last week to a stalemate right now, not very good production. And then the defense, their digging is a very good strength for them and they've been missing the easy ones. In Oregon meantime, seven kills in this first set from seven different players. Oregon gains another point. So, you know, we started out, Kevin, talking about Oregon's balance and <laughs> I guess that's about right. Seven different players right. with exactly one kill. And, and Jim Moore saying that's one of the things that actually we've gone away with. Since the Stanford match, we started setting all the opportunities to our stars. We started going to, to Crittenden. We started going to uh, Brenner and to Bettendorf. And, and we have gotten away from the balance. So really looking for that tonight and getting it so far. Blocking very well. They've got five block assists. That's a surprise. Right? And USC without one right now. A smash a little bit long. That's Martin Bettendorf, who's actually 10th in the Pac-12 in kills right now. And boy, what a, a big jump for her this year, huh? Chrome with the serve. USC gains the point. And, and Oregon just taking their eye off the ball right now. This is a couple of swings where they didn't get Really good attempts. Had the pass there, the set was there as well. A little four to one run for the Trojans right now. That was Chevy, the freshman, who put it over. And now Wanabu, but it'll be returned. Whittingham sets it. on going over the net for the Ducks. I like that play in that situation precisely. Lots of transition, lots of craziness shifting across and able to find that seam between the middle blocker and the end blocker. This is the draw play. No one expecting this at all. Wide open. Mauricio hey. had it sent right back at him. There's a 12th attempt for Wanabu in this first set, but only her second kill. Really taking some good swings though, but the Oregon defense slowing the ball down at the block and making the dig in the back. See what she does best, gets up high and hits it hard. Well, the Trojans needed that, getting Bricio to serve. Ooh, and into the net. That just kind of sums it up with this first set, huh? Right, right. Last week we saw 12 aces. We saw only one error from Bricio. Player of the week in the Pac-12 really because of that work on the back line. All those service aces against Colorado and Utah. Wanabu is starting to feel it now. 
And, and that's the situation that's perfect for her. Crone, such a good back setter, pulled over to the right side of your screen, really opens up that big seam. I like the setter setting the long way, specifically for this, or, this USC team. Whittingham serve. Went libero to libero right there. That's a big hit to get it back for Oregon. Now, instead of the long way on Oregon, what they do is they just run a faster tempo to the outside. That ball doesn't really get a big arc, and that opens up this seam. There's no chance for Ogums to get to the outside there. Well, it's funny, if you follow Oregon football, you know, they've been about speed for a long time, and that kind of drips on over to the, the volleyball program, too. And a timeout called is indeed quick is the word of the night so far. Oregon out quickly to a 21-14 lead here in the first set. USC usually wins at the Galen Center, although it's been kind of tough sledding it this year. They actually lost their first four on its home court. And right now, Oregon's in here in the first set with Jim Moore leading 21-14. Coach Moore's 10th year at Oregon. Knows this area a little bit, Kevin. Long Beach State graduate back in 1980. You look at the things that he has done over his career. Pretty special to come in, turning pretty weak teams into very strong teams. Maybe at Oregon the best year back in 2012, 30-5 record. On his way to the National Coach of the Year. Well, prior to his takeover at Oregon, the Ducks had gone 14 years without a winning record. And then, yeah, in his second year, he, he turned the tables. A lot of winning fortunes to this program, and he's really never looked back. Bricio hangs it high for Wanabu, and it's miss hit. USC will cut it down to 21-15. I like that, the deep dig. So many players are hitting the short deep, and all, all the defenses have rotated to be exactly on that. So the deep dig, surprise and finding some open court in the back. The USC still hitting under 100 in this first set. But hanging around. Whittingham. And Young wins that battle right at the net. She and Serena Warner shared the volleyball there for a moment. USC wins the point. And that's a battle that the setter always win. They have so much more experience, so much practice at that play. It's who pushes last wins that every time. Wanabu, who's had the best all-around set for USC, drills one into the net. You know, last week when we saw USC rolling through Colorado, through Utah, they were never forcing. They were never behind. They always seem to have that relaxed comfort, that cushion. And tonight, they don't have that. Although it's early, right? I mean, they, they could find <laughs> yeah. it. If anyone can go and scavenge for it, you figure McHaley will. And Samantha Bricio. Yeah. Boy, it helps to have the, the player of the week. Playing a hot volleyball at the, the right time. USC needing to get hot and did last week. But again, just a little bit off here in the first set. And we've seen her have that extra gear. We've seen her be able to push a bud seemingly at will, but hasn't been able to find it yet tonight. Without a kill in this first set and a couple of hitting errors in this first set, Bricio. You know, you talk about in volleyball the conversation between being in system where everything's going well and being out of system. And tonight for Coach Mick Haley, this has been an effort that has been all out of system. Out of system, out of whack, and almost out of time here in the first set. 24 to 16. Once again, Young was able to win the net battle. But Oregon wins the first set, and rather convincingly at that. Now it's been a while since the Trojans have lost a set by this many points on home floor, but it's happened here. Set one to the Oregon Ducks. What a statement by Oregon in the first set, although USC its own worst enemy at times. Nine errors in that first set on attack by USC. 
Only four for Oregon, Kevin. And your your thoughts here after one set? You know, this is an Oregon team that has been playing well. They've been losing matches, but hit over 300 against UCLA on Wednesday. You look at the stats tonight, Oregon out digging, out hitting, only one service error. USC really not doing anything well, and Oregon doing everything pretty good. Got to go back to September 23rd to find the last time that USC suffered a, a score this bad at home at a 25-13 loss in a set to UCLA almost a month ago. So, Good look at Liz Brenner. You, you look at her numbers that really tell the story. Hitting 750. We talked about her back row prowess. Eight digs leads all players on the court. And on the other side, the star for USC, Samantha Bricio. Hitting negative. No aces. One error. Really, how those stars go is how that first set played out. Yeah, and very strange. As strong as Bricio was in both matches last weekend, trying to smile her way through a, a tough night so far. And as we said, plenty of time to go here, obviously. And Bricio, who, remember, started slowly against Colorado last Friday, came on just fine. In fact, her worst set last weekend, I think, right, was that first set on the Friday night game. Yeah, she was talking about being nervous a little bit there. They had honored one of her heroes, Bibiana Candelis. But that smile is a very dangerous smile <laughs> if I'm Jim Moore for Oregon right now. It's an assassin's <laughs> smile, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> USC goes up one. Moving the ball very well right there to Ogums. We talked about Ogums being from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Boy, I gotta figure that's an easy sell on recruiting, <laughs> huh? Come on down here to SC. That's Elise Ruddens with that serve. That's the biggest change we can see on the court here for USC. Yeah, Lauren Gillis, they're pulling out. McKaylee's pulling out Lauren Gillis, the freshman outside hitter, and, and switching her out with a little more experience, the sophomore Elise Ruttons, who's, who's a glue player. She's not an offensive threat, but she takes care of a lot of the passing, a lot of the defense as well. Brenner scraped the net with the serve. There's the thunder from Bricio. I told you that smile was dangerous. <laughs> See the stare down. Any sort of emotion from Samantha Bricio is not something you expect, and you've got to feel the hairs on the back of your neck starting to, to peak a little bit. Well, she's pursuing her degree in psychology. I think you're, you're on to something here. <laughs> that little gleam in her eye. She knows something you don't. That one sailing too long from the Ogums. The start's so key for both teams. You really get the feeling if Oregon can put the pressure back on again, maybe you have an easy night a little bit. Oregon, we mentioned, started the year unranked, and they've crawled all the way up to number 10. USC rolls back on top at 3-2. to two. You talk about them being unranked. Uh, this is a team that lost a lot of offense last year. Ariana Williams was the second leading killer on the team, and what they've done to replace that has just gotten a lot more production from each individual position, adding that team balance that Coach Jim Moore was talking about. Well, the Ducks started 12-0. And yes, they're two and three since then, but the three losses, let's keep in mind, were to the teams that are ranked one, three, Right. And 19. So right. Not a lot of shame in any of that. Chelsea Ashen with the serve. And Wanabu's put away a good one. You know, and if you look at this USC team, Wanabu is really the bright spot so far. The ability to take a lot of swings. She's doubled up on anyone else on her team and still hitting for a very good percentage. Volleyball Magazine's National Freshman of the Year last year, Wanabu, from Lucas, Texas, and here's Bricio. Now Bricio, who was nailing every serve last weekend, not quite in rhythm here yet tonight. And sometimes you have those matches where you are unconscious, and then you get to a match again in a, a pretty relatively soon time, but you're not able to do that same thing. Maybe he needs to take a step back and, and dial down the aggressiveness a little bit, find her rhythm. Kiyoho's serve. Wanabu had it blocked back. 
And you talked about it, Kevin. Oregon is not really known for blocking, but they're doing it pretty well so and far it's tonight. it's situational. Not a very good set tight. We've seen some sets going inside. We've seen some sets going very close to the net as well. With Moanabu, keep that ball off the net. Get, let her use her power. Brenner had it blocked back. That's a couple of those for Hannah Schreyer tonight. Schreyer has done a good job. Offense, the defense as well here on the 2011 All-Freshman team when she was a starter as a middle blocker. Whittingham this time. And Nady able to slam it down. And Jim Moore happy because he's got the balance again. You see all the different options and setters. Both of them doing a very good job of spreading the wealth, not really getting predictable and going one place all over and over again. Nady got that done. She's actually got the best hitting percentage in Pac-12 conference matches. So Oregon gets another point. Pass too tight to the net this time. So all of a sudden your back row setter becomes a back row blocker, which is illegal. And Mick Haley not happy. So the rule on that ball is as soon as it crosses the plane of the net, the defense can attack the ball. But if they jump the gun and attack too soon, then it's the fault is on their side. So really it's a bang-bang play. And again, just add a rhythm, add a kilter is USC right now. Except for Wanabu. <laughs> Once again, that long way set. From the left side, Crone making it look very easy. That's a very difficult set. And then off the net, up high for Nuanabu. Nothing fancy. Just let her overwhelm with overwhelming power. Seven out of the 16 kills tonight for USC have been from Wanabu. Oregon gets it to the net. And it's that surprising offense. Typically, Brenner's going to go out to the left side, most outside hitters, but here she passes the ball. The block is nowhere near her opening up that seam. No one does it better than Jim Moore's Oregon team. A lot of that's verbalized. A lot of that is the dictated by the hitter. No one else in the country doing that. Typically, you'll have the setter call every single play. Jim Moore, everything's flip-flopped. Another Oregon block. Some finesse that time from Ruddens. I like that play, what she did very well there. She did not show the tip until the very last minute. You're gonna see the full windup. This looks like a hit until the very last second. Ruddens, the niece of one of the most heralded setters in USC's history, Kim Ruddens, back in the 80s. Get your shots now. Come on, get your shots. To the back line for Bricio, and she finally gets one down. Smart shot. She goes with the fastball. Kiyoho pops up the first one, this time turning it down the line, that flip of the wrist at the last moment. Bricio pulls even right now. She's out of a negative hitting percentage. Dunked on down, and there's Brenner, who usually is about power, but not that time. And that's just USC getting a late move on this. You can see Brenner giving this up really early, that hand very open. Whittingham didn't miss a dig like that all week long last week. Young has it returned. And that's to USC. Calling the double contact on that set. One of the first miscues from Oregon. Maggie Scott, the freshman, proven winner in high school from Missouri. Great potential. Doing a great job this year. High school team, three-time state champions. Oldham's couldn't quite find a way to keep it alive for SC that time. And what is that play? That's like a one and a half in the middle to your right side hitter, hmm. Bettendorf. That's that's not a play that's in anyone else's playbook throughout the Pac-12, maybe throughout the country. 
That make Oregon tough to, to plan for, tough to... Right, you don't know where the point of attack is going to be for each player. Kept alive off Fabrizio attempt. Young, too strong. The Oregon block, we talked about the dismal numbers throughout the year. They're making the right decisions. The reads are perfect. We're seeing three up on some attacks. That time, two up as well. And now Warner. They're returning on Bricio quite a bit. And there is Nady again as Oregon extends the second set lead. Boy, Oregon with a lot of jump right now. And USC has got to figure this out. Trojans lost the first set, and they trail in number two. Got a highly respected coach here at USC, no doubt, in Mr. Haley. One of the best all-time four national champions. Maybe one of the dapperest dressers in the college <laughs> ranks as well. This is a guy who uh, leads a program. They were picked number two in the preseason rankings. Five of the 12 coaches said that they would win the conference championships. And frankly, they've been struggling this year. This is a team that uh, last week was in almost a must-win situation. This is a team that said, we, we're, we're forcing right now. We, we're trying too hard. We need to relax and, and have a little bit more fun. And tonight, not really getting any attack at all against Oregon. You look at Oregon's success throughout the year, and they do very well when they can battle and have a better offense than the other team. They get in these offensive battles. USC not able to really match the fire tonight. Well, that's certainly what Oregon had last time out against UCLA, when the two teams combined to hit around 385. Oregon's holding up its end of the bargain tonight. Been a struggle for USC. That's a needed point right there. A couple of lucky plays, a couple of good bounces for Oregon. And now you have some of your better servers up at the front line. You've got Bricio on deck soon. Got to get a little, a little cushion for her. Got to get a little closer. Don't put so much pressure on her. I don't think USC has had three points in a row yet in this match. Yeah, every, this right of it, every time you think they're going to get on a bit of a roll, it just kind of stops. And this is a team we saw runs of six, seven last week. And uh, yeah, just Oregon's offense really not going to let you do that, though. They have such a high-packed offense. Chelsea Ashen will serve it here. That one is going to Oregon on another attempt from USC that just goes a little strong. And not going to show up as a block, but that should be credited as a block because back play, back slide, lots of motion, still able to get two solid blockers up. Really hitting well right now. Wow, I didn't see a block. Samantha Bricio didn't feel a block either. Yeah, they're saying it brushed at the, the must have been Schreer, I guess they're saying that, that it hit, but. Definitely didn't hit Schreer. If anyone no. was Bricio, was down that line. Bumped over. Kept hot. And Bricio with the slam. I like that decision from Crone. Bricio not in any sort of rhythm. She's been getting all the bad situations. Finally a good set for USC. Finally a one-on-one -on -one opportunity from Bricio. A chance for her to get a little bit of groove going. Well, if they're going to get in the groove now, here's who will get them to that point. This is Bricio. Still not letting her get those aces. Oregon takes it right away from the best weapon USC has. Wow. So impressive, Oregon. That's a good pass. We didn't see any passes that good last week against Colorado or Utah, controlling the pass and running very difficult sets. Looks a frustrated, if not flummoxed, Samantha Bricio right now. A lot of things going right for the Ducks, huh? 18-11 in the second and, set. And the block again. Those two, Crittenden and Nady, combining quite a few times. That's their third block combined. 
Been a great play from Brenner, who's got 10 digs. Too much from Brescio. And, and I think this is what you do if you're USC. If your star player is not in a groove, if your star player is struggling, we'll keep on going her until she gets in a groove and go to her in good situations like this where she's going to have only one up, have big seams, good opportunities. Can't keep a good woman down, not all night. You figure at some point Brescio figures it out. But Oregon, meantime, is doing a lot of things very well. Casey Nady with another kill. And, and the problem, this is just like the football team for Oregon. They will just run up the score and, <laughs> and, and make you catch up with them. It's not a defensive battle at all. It's keep up with us. Ducks won the first set by nine, and they the second by seven. And the kill shot from Crittenden, her brother, whose brother Omari was a football player right here at SC under Pete Carroll not too long ago. Father was a, a track athlete at Cal as well. Very athletic family, seeing what she's able to do. Good wrist away. That's a tough swing from the left side for a left-hander. Oregon gets the point. Bricio guessing it was going to go too long, and it did not. And this is just a nightmare start at home for USC. Mick Haley wants timeout. All well, that pixie dust that usually settles down here on this arena for USC is not showing up right now. Monday, it's a top. Samantha Bricio is going to be asked to help USC get back in this one tonight, Kevin. She carried them last weekend was so good last week, unconscious, really. When times were bleak, her team's back was up against the wall. The star really pulled them through. You know, talking to Coach McHaley, though, very aware of not killing the Golden Goose. Uh, Bricio has been such a force from the service line in the front row offensively, and tonight the, the Goose has been cooked so far. No aces, three errors on hitting, only four kills hitting nearly zero. There's been only one ace in this entire match. And it's actually been from Oregon and not USC. That's a huge surprise. And, and the passing squad, you look at it, they have a very good libero serving the ball right now. They also have Kiojo, who was a libero, starting libero at Colorado two years ago, making the dig in the back row as well. Into the net it goes. And coming up at the intermission, a reminder, we'll bring you the Pac-12 intermission report from the Pac-12 Network studio. Ashley Adamson is standing by. Show you what number three Washington did, what number one Stanford did tonight. Get you updated on everything Pac-12 related. Crittenden over. And one of them. Get that point for SC. 21-14 is wow. exactly where it was in set number one. Right, and they're leaning on Wanabu. Even in the back row, she's serving. She's back playing defense, hitting out of the back row. Not something we're used to seeing. Well, you were spot on featuring her when we came on the air tonight. Fabrizio would have been the easy play as the reigning player of the week. But sure enough, it's been Wanabu keeping SC around. Nick Haley, no real answer there on the other left side. Opposite Bricio, we've seen Gillis, we've seen Ruddins as well, not able to get very much offense from either of them. Gillis hitting minus 500. Ruddins one kill on two attempts. Overall, USC hitting 104. Gillis back on the court. Mauricio saves it. Oh, wow. Both coaches up off the bench. Both coaches advocating. Mauricio with the hammer down. Nick Haley is staring down the down ref right now. Yeah. And across the court, <laughs> you've got Jim Moore working on the other official. It's rare that to see both coaches walk away upset <laughs> on, on one well, rally. Well, I think Mick Haley was upset during the play, not so upset at the end of the play. Jim Moore kind of growing in upset as he saw the result. 
Anne-Marie Schmidt to serve. Came off the bench in sets three and four last week against Utah. Was very good. And the USC trying to crawl back here. Ogums with the commit, with the good decision. You do not block this ball unless you are aware of it and aware of the play before it happens. Really smart play, really smart decision. Oregon still passing well. Ooh, and a block. SC throws it right back towards Bettendorf. That quick offense, USC getting two outside. Ogum's back to back in the position. She doesn't get the block there, but she fills the seam. And Emily Young gets over big. In the meantime, Maggie Scott got an earful from Coach Jim Moore. And Mick Haley's still working it. Yeah, this is not, not something we're used to seeing from him, but he's seen it a couple of different times. And what's happening is it's a tight pass. Pizza Segola getting up, Chrome getting up, and, and really getting to the ball before it breaks the plane. But Oregon, very aggressive, and so making a lot of contact. I think he is in the right on those last two calls. At a certain point in time, you got to get back to your team, right? Yeah. you got to get them refocused. Uh, I like the energy, I like the aggressiveness from USC, and the blocking really has turned this set around. Well, USC is on a 6-2 run right now, having dropped the first set by nine. And again, Oregon up to number 10 in the country with a, a very highly ranked freshman class. Making some noise, 14-3 and three overall, started 12-0. USC, you talked about it, a very sluggish start this year. And now with a three-game win streak that has followed a three-game losing streak, I think kind of a tipping point weekend for them. Yeah, yeah. Things very bleak. Let's take a look at this tight play. Here's that tight pass. Oh, for sure, Oregon jumping the gun. Serena Warner, she's a senior. She should know better than that going up a little too early. Got to let that setter put the ball in play and, and make the second contact. All right. Liz Brenner trying to make sure Oregon hangs on here in the second set. And one of the difficulties right now for USC, so many good options on the Oregon side. You've got Brenner, you've got Warner in the middle, Bettendorf on the left. Locked back, and USC with some jump in their best run of the night. And Ogums again, that was a quick set. That was a back set. That was very complicated. Ogums late there, but still works hard. That's a play where you just don't give up. You keep on trying. Ogums, the only woman of Troy averaging a block per set. And USC again, keeping Schmidt on the back line to serve and getting within three. And all the runs that haven't been happening, Jim Moore. Arguing as well, calling the timeout, doesn't have a valid point there. That ball definitely passed over the net more. It's the frustration with this team. This is, a, this is a team that hasn't given up runs. This is a team that all of a sudden is starting to give up runs, and then a lot of it's mental, a lot of it's Ogums on the other side with the smart blocking. Eight to two run for USC. See that bang bang play, and it's it's a game of inches. All you have to do is let that ball cross a millimeter over the net, and, and you can hit it. And, and a lot of times, a very difficult call for the refs to make. Now, if Oregon's going to keep on shimmying up this coach's pole, this would be a huge one to get here if they can take out number 18 USC on its home court. Look at all the Pac-12 representation in there. Stanford at one, Washington at three. And of course, Oregon now at 10. Seven of the top 19 overall right now in the uh, latest coaches poll are out of the Pac-12. And two undefeated teams in Stanford and Washington. Last year, the Big Ten on par. You, you know, you could look at the strengths being pretty equal, but this year, Pac-12 really surpassing the Big Ten in, in conference strength. If USC wins tonight, Think about this. They'll be four and three. They'd nudge up there and essentially be the number four team in the conference. They were number 11 a week and a half ago. We were talking to Tim Nolan about that. You know, the, the offense, they were ranked number 10 or 11 in the conference. He said we could be three or four by the end of this week. 
I kind of project our offense being number three or four by the end of the season as well. And, and a lot of that, you got to look, it's Ebony Nwanabu, really. Well, she's been helpful. Ogums, Schmidt, USC on this 8-2 run to cut it down to 22-19, trying to avoid falling down 0-2. Still, USC on the run. And for the first time, the Oregon office, offense is breaking down a lot of that. The passing is breaking down. Well, it seems like Schmidt's been on that back line serving for 10 minutes. Wow, good Ooh. dig. Benson started to celebrate it, but the, the point is still in play. Benson nudges it over. A great block. Young. Brenner couldn't put it away. Here we go with Bricio. It's the longest rally of the night. USC on a 10-2 run. from the freshman setter. So many great digs on both sides. Pizza Segola, not known as being a great defender, but saving that point and really turning this play around. Momentum squarely wearing a white uniform right now. It's still USC. This was 21-14, Oregon. And the crazy thing about it is USC has turned it around with their block. Of all things, the block has turned it around for the team in white. All the way back from down seven. And Oregon needed that desperately. See the variety of offense. We saw Brenner on the left time, time and time again. This time swinging back to the right side. Give it a different look. the point where USC with a couple of good serves can even things up at one set to one. And in system, SC finding their group. Good pass, good set to your star hitter. That's a good formula for a kill. Oregon's within a point now of going up 2-0. And you think about this Oregon offense, and you think about all the stars in the front row, and yet they still have the confidence to go to a freshman like Frankie Chevy shows you how varied they are and how sophisticated as well. Warner. Can SC save it? Yes, they can, thanks to Bricio. Options on the Oregon side, and then on the other side for USC, everyone in the building knows it's going to Bricio, and yet Oregon not able to stop it. And Emily Young, who's... <laughs> Oregon again gets it to within a point of going up 2-0. And before the point, I'm telling myself, this ball's going to Bettendorf. Hmm. The genius thing for Oregon, though, it's not going on the right where it's been going all night long. It goes into the middle. They swing her on the X2. That's what's special about this offense. Set point for Oregon. <laughs> the block. That, wow, from they 80. missed the net. Boy, what a stunning wow. start here. Dodging a bullet, missing the net, missing the fact that Bricio was going to be serving very next play. Oregon, having lost to UCLA a few days ago, up 2-0 on USC. And coming up, we'll take you to our Pac-12 Network studio for the Pac-12 Intermission Report. Ashley Adamson standing by. Back by Allstate. Clicker call.
Hey, good evening. I'm Ashley Adamson with this Pac-12 Volleyball Intermission Report. We'll get you back to the Galen Center for third set action between USC and Oregon in a few. But first, the Trojans and Ducks, not the only top 20 Pac-12 showdown going on tonight. The unbeaten Huskies on the road at ASU. Krista Van Sant with plenty to smile about this evening. First set, set point for the Dogs. Van Sant with the bullet. Caps a 19-9 run by UW to close out the set. Set number two, Washington up 23-18. Van Sant. This time with the soft touch for the kill. She had 16 kills, 13 digs. Huskies take the second set, so we go to the third off the block. Tia Scambre showing some strength, and the Huskies sweep the Sun Devils to remain undefeated. It was a battle in Boulder this evening, undefeated, and top-ranked Stanford getting all they could handle from the Buffs. Third set, tied at one, set point for Colorado. Nicole Edelman. Edelman. Sets up Alexis Austin, who puts away the kill. Colorado up two sets to one and feeling good. Four set now at set point for the Cardinal. Austin attempts a spike, but Inky Ajanaku there for the big block. We are tied at two sets apiece. Let's go to the fifth set. Match point for Stanford. Maddie Bug sneaks it over the net with the soft touch, and Stanford comes back to win. They remain undefeated. Time for a quick break, but stay tuned. The Pac-12 Sports Report update is next. We'll be back right after this. I'm Ashley Adamson back here with your sports report update. Coming up on Monday's show, we're working on a special story for you in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Madison Ty, a junior on the top-ranked UCLA women's soccer team, shares the story of her mother's ongoing battle with lymphoma and how a social media movement is helping the family cope. So I had just come back from practice and I was on the phone with her and she, I knew right away is when she started, because she just started crying, she didn't really have to say anything. Obviously Madison, was really sad about it, but she just was ready to fight, and I think that that's what her mom's mentality was. And there is D Strong, the championism for this UCLA team who is supporting Madison Ty's mother, who is going through some treatments right now. It just became something where they said, like, D Strong, D Strong. My sister and I both took pictures with our teams, and we posted it and then people were like, wow, this is really cool. I think it's amazing that other teams have picked this up. There have been other women's soccer teams, there have been other sports teams at schools all across the country. I think that it's just kind of like been really catchy. <laughs> and you can see the full story Monday night on Pac-12 Sports Report. Just a reminder, we're on late again this week, 9 p.m. Pacific following soccer. Hope to see you then. That's all the time we have in studio. We'll get you back to your match right after this quick break. Have a great weekend, and thanks for watching the Pac-12 Sports Report Update. Oregon trying to run through the Southern California gauntlet. They had to play number 19 UCLA. Now it's number 18 USC, and so far so good for Oregon. USC will look to turn it around now in the third set, and Mick Haley, the coach of USC, will talk to us now and uh, tell us what went wrong in those first two sets. Coach, what would you see? Well, it's on us. Uh, and obviously you can tell that because you're watching. Um, we just have to execute. I, I feel like we're in the match if, if we play. So um, I'm looking to come back and uh, get this third set and uh, make this a pretty good uh, spectator event. Obviously, uh, Aces, one of your guys' strength. Uh, 22 of them last week, zero so far tonight. What do you think you're doing wrong? Well, I think you can't live and die on that stuff. You have to serve tough every time. Aces are no aces. We need to uh, drive them off the net a little bit, get some chance to use our block like we did there at the end, and, and stay in the match and not give so many points. We give too many points. Go get them, Coach. Thanks <laughs> for your time. Thanks. And we'll check the stats. You mentioned it, Kevin Wong. One service ace total in this match, and it's actually to Oregon. Amanda Benson had it. That, that's really surprising. Right, and, and right from the top, you see the hitting percentage for Oregon. This is a team that has been hitting high all year long. The balance often six different players making big contributions. The defense, something that's a little surprising, though. 35 digs to 24 over USC, and then the blocks were very similar numbers as well. Oregon doing the things we always expect, also adding some things we don't. You know what's amazing is you look at the, the top three point getters in this game, they're all USC Trojans. 
Wanabu with eight, Bricio seven and a half, Ogums with six and a half. No one for Oregon has as many as six and a half. Brenner is close with six points right now, but you talked about Oregon's balance right off out of the, the shoot here tonight, Kevin. You're exactly right. Brenner with six, Nady with five, Warner with five, Bettendorf with five, Crittenden with five. And, and so hard to key on any one of the Oregon players, so hard to stop any one of them because you have three viable options in every single rotation. USC has not come back from down 0-2 yet this year. In fact, every time it's been at 0-2, it has quickly gone to a sweep for the opponent. Really struggling, specifically on the left side. Lauren Gillis, you'd expect that. She's a freshman. You're not going to expect your leader, Fricio, your junior star, to be struggling like she has been tonight. Schmidt begins with that first serve, and she was outstanding in that second set. Remember, SC had a 9-1 run to get close in that second set. Into the net, and SC goes first here in the, the third set. And you talk about momentum, and you talk about the test set. Even though USC lost that second set, they really did a great job, a marvelous job of battling back and getting some of the, that momentum. They were tied at 22, at 23, and at 24 after being down 21-14. USC with the most aces in Pac-12 play. And a lot of that, of course, is Bricio there without one of those in this one. Young with a big hit. Special play. That ball looked like it was going over the net. Pizza Segola, 5'10". That seems generous, but able to get up high and, and deliver the goods. Young, who went 7 of 11 against Colorado last Friday night. And we get to USC, up 2 to 1. Boy, well struck by Frankie Chevy, just a freshman. And, and Young's there, that's a mistake. She's a senior blocker on the outside. She's got one person to watch. The person who goes right in front of her, she takes her eye off the hitter, puts her eye on the ball, and is late to the position. And now Serena Warner. Fabrizio had it pounded down. Another block for Oregon. And once again, SC out of system. The pass pulled off the net. The offense gets very predictable. And you can see Oregon keying on Bricio at all times. They know exactly where Samantha Bricio is at any moment. Bettendorf got credit for that last block at the net. Now Schreyer, the senior, six foot three. In the hitting percentage of around 350 last year. USC lost a little bit from last year's team. We know that. 30 and 6 was their record. One more loss this year, Kevin. They'll already be behind where they were. This will be their seventh loss if they don't rally. You go back the last four years, you're talking 30 and 6, 29 and 6, 29 and 5. Oh, and and start, 29 and 5 again. And it starts with the, the players, the recruits that they get year in, year out. The number one recruiting class, the number two recruiting class. Actually, this is a young team. 11 freshmen and sophomores. Going to take some time to get, get the ball rolling again. Young to the far side. And Oregon gets that point. And, and you know, the conversation we were having last week before they won back-to-back -back matches was, hey, when's the last time they broke out of the top 25? And that was a very serious reality last week and it, it, the answer to that 25 years 1990 the last time they dropped out of the top 25 rankings Bricio had it blocked back but SC gets the point as it flies out of bounds and just to pick up on that thread Kevin the, the last time USC finished out of the top five in the conference standings just out of the top five was 1986 wow that's 10 years before some of these current players were born wow. <laughs> So that's why it is weird to see them kind of mid-pack right now in the Pac-12. But you're right, they're young. Got some things to iron out. Wanabu gains the point for the Trojans. I'll tell you what, I'm getting a little bit defensive if I'm Coach Jim Moore for Oregon right now because Samantha Bricio, best serve for her of the night so far. This is where USC can go on a run when Bricio is serving. School's all-time leader in aces, ahead of the great Nancy Hillman. 
<laughs> and it's just not her night from that back line. I liked it. Took a little bit of power off it, just missing a few inches. No time for panic. They, you know, they've had other people put some pressure on from the service line. Now Schmidt was serving really well in that second set. Wannabe, yeah. And that's something that's interesting that Nick Haley said in, in the, the between game interview. You know, it's something that uh, Karch Karai says with the national team all the time. We do not go for aces. What we go for are opportunities. We want to bring the ball off the net. We want to make their offense very predictable. Aces are just kind of a happy accident sometimes, right? right? Malfunction at the junction right there. USC had about I think four different bodies towards that ball. Something that Brenner is so good at. All the different shots, all the, the quick offense. Not going to beat you over the top. Not going to beat you with elevation, but going to beat you with quickness, creativity. That was Benson's serve. The freshman Gillis couldn't put it away. Brenner does put it away. And it got a hacky sacked away by Coach Haley right in front of us. And the quick set again, one on one, Brenner. Maybe the opposite hitter of Nuanabu. Nuanabu's going to get up, hit high, very predictable. Going to beat you with the power game. Now the finesse wins the point for Oregon. And, and you can see Brenner over there. She's playing yo-yo. She's got you going far. Yeah. She's got you going backwards. She's going slow. She's Smart going player, fast. Huh? Right. You only get to be that if you're a senior. You see the game in slow motion. And as we've talked about, she sees many different games in slow motion. Racquetball right. champion, right? Plays well for the Oregon basketball team. First player in 30 years at Oregon to play three different collegiate sports, and then she goes and crushes it down and adds beach volleyball, adds track and field. You and I are just trying to win at Yahtzee on the side. <laughs> Rochambeau. Let's go, let's go. Pizza Segola with that serve. Crittenden with some power. And again, if you follow USC football, you'll know her brother Omari, who was in the secondary for USC for a while. Got a bright, bright future. Sprinter in high school. Four by 100 team won the conference titles in 2011 and 2012. Riccio with some thunder. We talked about the button that she has that not many players have. She's starting to press it. There is an urgency from Samantha Bricio. We saw it at the service line. Now we're seeing a big, broad jump from the back row, hitting against the three-person block, focused entirely on her. Each set, she's gotten a little bit stronger here tonight. Schmidt saved it. And Bricio able to get USC back a little closer. And you start creeping it, and if you're Jim Moore, you're starting to get a little worried because this is a, a USC team that can get hot. So many good things have happened tonight with Schmidt doing the serving back there. Oh, seemingly right through the net for Ogums to tie it up at 10. And we talk about the balance from Oregon. I think that USC could use more balance on their side, and I think a big key to that is Ogum's in the middle. Get her involved. I'll set it up for Young. And USC toggles on top. A few miscues from Oregon, some missed passes, some missed sets, and Jim Moore sensing that momentum, starting to shift, makes the timeout call. With the Trojans now on top, needing this third set to stay alive tonight. Volleyball presented by Tachikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. 
Slowly but surely, USC is starting to get it a little bit better. They hit 056 in the first set, 220 in the second set, 471 so far, Kevin, here in the third. And Oregon's offense still going strong as well in the third set. They're hitting 500. The difference, though, 10 attempts versus the 17 from USC. Not as many attempts. They're not passing as well. They're not playing as good defense. And the numbers proven it. And Samantha Bricio, who had a negative hitting percentage in the first set and then got it right in the second set, has really been strong now here in the third set. Leaving you to wonder if it goes to four and then five, how strong will she be by then? Scary times for Oregon. Anne-Marie Schmidt has been a spark plug. She had the serve, Oregon gets the point. And even when Oregon goes to the middle, even when they go to the people in the right position, that's a back one, it's attacking seams. Jim Moore constantly, his offense attacking seams, moving into places. Brenner. Young couldn't quite put it away, and Oregon's boy, you called her number just moments ago. Important player, six foot four, and getting it down for USC. Father Joe was a professional basketball player, member of the Basketball Manitoba Hall of Fame. Mother also played basketball, but at Winnipeg. Skims the net from Chevy. The block for Oregon. And Nady will rotate back in now. She's had a very strong game for the Ducks. Another tight set. Difficult situation. Warner, the transfer from Ohio University. With that last serve, USC gets it back. We're starting to see the balance. We're starting to see, hey, you're still not seeing a lot of motion. You've got a one in the middle. You've got a four on the left. You've got a five on the right side. But the fact that they're going to different people, a good thing for USC. play out to the four ball though the set dying inside a little bit Bricio using that to her advantage jumping inside the about the the block well, she just embedded that ball <laughs> Whittingham saves it Bricio with a return from Oregon and a point for SC First time the Trojans have led by three at any point tonight. Good timing by Nwanabu, and then she also fills the seam. You see on your left side of the screen, takes a little bit of that left arm, presses over the court, taking her line and a little bit of seam. USC seems to be in control now in the third set. And we've talked about that play, jumping the gun, attacking it too early. That time, Bricio having the patience, waiting for the ball, forcing Jim Moore to call a second timeout. Jim Moore's team took the first two. Gonna work real hard to sweep. So many talented young players in this great conference. Mary Kate Marshall from suburban Dallas. 30 kills on 93 swings, only four total errors this past weekend. Oregon State starting to get it done. They split two home matches against Washington and Washington State. As you look forward, Sunday is a whole day of Women's Conference Volleyball. Five huge matches, and you'll see Oregon State at USC or Cal taking on Colorado or Washington State and Arizona State. Then at 1 o'clock, number one, Stanford going against Utah. And at 3 o'clock, it all finishes up with a top 20 matchup. Number three, Washington, and number 16, Arizona. Live action starting this Sunday at 11 on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 Now. Emily Young to serve, USC the lead in set three. Oregon had it taken the first two sets. The first one very convincingly, Kevin. The second one they really had to work for. Now they're trying to battle back here in the third. Good swing from the freshman, Frankie Shebby. Got a great lineage 
Modern Day High School, one of the top programs in the country, the Zuno Long Beach Volleyball Club as well. Ashen served at that time. That one gets down from Frankie Chevy. And you can really look at the, the going-ons for these two different teams at their freshman star outside hitters. Lauren Gillis struggling for USC right. all night long. Frankie Chevy having a pretty good outing. And she was very good against UCLA last Friday with 12 kills tied for the team lead. A little bit strong from Brenner. One of her few mistakes on the night was hitting 300, but the 14 digs, you never see an outside hitter who out digs their libero and out digs the other libero as well. Whittingham, only six digs. Watch over. Mauricio, still looking for that first service ace of the night. You know, the only other time she didn't have an ace in Pac-12 play, I'm just thinking out loud here, Kevin, was against UCLA. And that's the one time they got swept on home floor here in conference play. And, and, but tonight, I think you have to give some credit to Colorado's passing. I don't think it's only Bricio. I think she's been hitting some very tough serves. I apologize, Oregon's passing. And there's Oregon with another point. And a quietly strong night again for Casey Nady. And Mick Haley once again, he's gotten a few bad calls against him tonight. Three bad calls by my count, but asking for a net on that play. Had to readjust at the net. Set it up for Brenner. And uh, Young tipped it. Bricio stepped away from it. We're tied. Mick Haley wants to talk it over. Look at this swing. It's barely crossing the net. Brenner's hits do not go very high, but what they do is they find hands on the way up, they find seams in the block, and they find their way to the floor. Now these Trojans and these Ducks will be back in action with more exciting women's volleyball on Pac-12 Networks. Talking about Wednesday, 7.30. The Trojans currently ranked 18th, traveling up to Berkeley, taking on the Cal Bears or Oregon against Arizona, number 10 against number 16. Live coverage starting Wednesday at 7.30 on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 Now. Check pac-12.com for the games in your area. We got two undefeated teams, both ranked in the top three in the country, up at the very top of this conference, very competitive conference. But after that, boy, you talk about a, a just a, a jambalaya of, of possibilities here. Everybody's got a little bit of meat in the stew right now. Arizona, Oregon, UCLA, Oregon State, which has struggled forever, but not this year. Right. USC, Colorado, Arizona State's a good program. And boy, Utah at two and five is kind of a surprise the way they came in here and battled USC last weekend. California at the bottom is a surprise as well. Got to be happy for Terry Laskevich, though, at Oregon State. He has been struggling there. Yeah, this is a tough, tough conference and uh, really was excited about the recruiting class here, last year, and it's really paying off for Oregon State. In the meantime, Oregon is trying to plant its flag very firmly in this conference. They've been the top four the last couple of years. And now, boy, a, a win here at USC not only cements them in the top, four again here this year, but they're going to get some talk about moving on up from 10. Smash down. That's Crittenden. And another play that Whittingham made last week. This ball's not hit that hard. Kind of a crazy angle, but still no move from the libero. Chelsea Kiyoho to serve it. Wanabu couldn't find the seam, and there's some floor for Oregon. As we remind you, USC, the other couple times this year that they've been down 0-2, it's quickly gone 0-3 and good night. And trouble, trouble play. Brenner making a little lemonade. SC has to do a better job of being ready for the, the unpredictable because Oregon throws it at you all the time. Well, we keep talking about it. Bricio. Not to put all the pressure on her, but if USC saves it, and she'll the, be the one. And the big play, that's a special play on the collegiate level. Something you see 
a little bit on the Olympic level. Here's Whittingham. Fired right towards Coach Haley, who actually would have been happy to get struck by that ball <laughs> if it means USC getting back in it. Got to think this ball and a good pass is going out to Frenner on a quick set. Canadian stand, yeah. And that's what makes them so special, right? That's what makes Oregon such a special offensive team is you can stack your deck and think what you think is going to happen, and they will go and break all the rules. Expect the unexpected. And that's in kind of a macro form tonight, too, as Oregon could sweep. But there's what we're talking about with Brenner getting the opportunity at the net. That has been USC's most successful play. It's been the set the long way. They pass over to the left side of the court. The defense for Oregon shifts that way. They go back to the right side. Oregon's got to stay true. They've got to know the tendencies of USC. The Italian Lee J. Pizza Segola to the back line now. Tied at 20. Both teams in the top 20. And again, seven of the top 20 teams right now are in this Pac-12 conference. Warner. 3x2, another complicated play. You know, Oregon, in order to be able to run this kind of offense, you've got to pass well. If you don't pass well, you can't run all the crazy options. Scores again. Once again, not a great situation. Liz Brenner just making a smart hit. That time high off the hands. A lot of good things happen when you hit high off the hands. Timeout USC. They've got the freshman Oregon does. Maggie Scott on the back line to serve. And they are three points away from a sweep now. Tomorrow here in the L.A. area, the Buffalo Stampede, the Colorado Buffs coming in to take on USC. After coming off a win against Arizona, the Trojans continue to regain their dominance. Colorado hungry for an upset. Number 22 USC against Colorado live from here in L.A. Coverage starting tomorrow at 2 with the pregame show right here on Pac-12 Networks and Pac-12 Now. All right, so if you're Oregon right here, again, we, we've been told to expect the unexpected, but any rhyme or reason to, to how they try to finish this off? Well, the, the first thing they're going to do, they're going to go against a very predictable USC offense. You're going to see a high ball outside to either way. Now, if USC can get a pass and get a little more unpredictable, they can run the quick a little bit. They can run the middle. They can take advantage of some of the, the seams in the offense. On the other side, when they go back, they have got to put more pressure on Oregon from the service line. They don't need to get aces, just like Coach Nick Haley said. Just take away a couple options. Get, just bring that pass off the net. USC's actually hitting 400 in this third set, but Oregon's hitting 433. <laughs> and that, that's what Oregon did with, with UCLA last Friday. Exactly. They pass the ball, they spread the offense around. They're very unpredictable. What a crazy year for USC. You know, this is a place that, that used to be a place they defended. They defended with pride. They did not let you come in here and win matches, and, and not so much this year. They were 108-12 and 12 all time at the Galen Center until this year. And they could be dropping to 2-5. and five. Freshman Maggie Scott trying to deliver for the Ducks. Ogum's in the middle on a good pass. Young gets a much needed point for USC, although to your point, Ogums was ready for it, but Young saw that seam and hammered it. One on one, the best swing for Young all match long. Put a little extra oomph into that one. Still only one service ace this entire game, the two teams combined. They're looking for that hole, couldn't find it. Pizza 
Gets the ball of Sabre. Grecia destroys it. Well earned point from USC. This is one of Oregon's better rotations. They've got a lot of offense, but USC fighting it off and Grecia hitting the high hands out of not a perfect situation. Anne Marie Schmidt. A lot of good things happening when she's been serving tonight. Ooh, but this one's into the net at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> wow, and Mick Haley's reaction says it all. Not looking for the ace, just looking for the trouble serve. See how USC responds. The number one team in conference in aces doesn't have one tonight. Getting it ready for Bricio. Bricio, but Oregon takes it as it goes a little long and it's 24-22, one point left to get. And you just feel for Bricio, she's had so many opportunities in terrible situations and hasn't really done a Bricio job tonight. Save it, and they can win it. Not quite yet. Ooh, we talked about the, the whole game of inches thing. About five of them right there, if that, separating Oregon from a win. Ogham's back to serve. Oregon, lots of offensive weapons. Bettendorf on the right side would be my choice, so that probably means they're going somewhere else. <laughs> Ogham's needed to save it, and she did. And Young powers it down. Wow, and, and USC finally got their break. That was the deep dish from Pizza Segola. Watch how long that gets held in the hands. But Young bringing that senior urgency. Deep dish Pizza Segola, huh? You like? Very well played by you. And Mauricio getting in the front of Bettendorf, really forcing that play. One of the few times they've read that quick attack. USC with a set point now. Point Oregon to a USC win in set three. The Trojans, for the first time this year, when they're down 0 2, don't get swept. There will be a fourth set, and now there's a little bit of jump in this arena. USC back to within 2 to 1 against Oregon. and USC trade 26-24 scores in sets two and three. Oregon just couldn't put the Trojans away. And, and a great highlight, that SC doing it with their block there at the end of the, the game. You're starting to see the Oregon offense slow down a little bit. SC is starting to pick up on some hitting tendencies. The, the dig still much in Oregon's favor. It, you know, you really ask yourself, is how is an Oregon team going to respond to a, a set they should have won, a match they should have already won? They right. have swings for the match. USC, meantime, last time they took the court, you saw that uh, note about the, the serves, where tonight it's no aces and nine errors. Last time out, it was 15 aces and nine errors. So they've gone from 0 to or from 15 down to 0, and essentially, on the serves, but they're, they're still hanging around. And, and they're doing it with the blocks. They're also doing it with their role players. Emily Young getting three blocks, getting in there, and, and maybe two of her bigger swings of the season. Alicia Ogums, what about the job that the young star, the junior star middle blocker from Manitoba, Canada, has been doing? She's been blocking. She played some defense there at the end of the set. She's been doing offensively, hitting as well. Interesting to see how... Oregon comes out of here because they could be dwelling on that last set and not refocus on, on, on this set. On, Maggie Scott will go back and serve. Hey. 
having to play numbers 19 and 18 back-to-back -back games here in L.A. Oregon could not beat UCLA. They were poised to beat USC. Still might do it, but certainly SC's got the momentum. Great swing blocks Serena Warner, the transfer from Ohio. Had a monster year back in 2012, led the Mac in blocks, fourth in hitting. Benson bumps it up. Keeps it to goal, it saves it. Going cross court, but wide at that time. Bettendorf can't quite find that rhythm right now. Hitting 0-3-6, one of her worst matches of the year. Started off pretty hot, but that block from USC starting to pick yeah. up, starting to put a little pressure on the Oregon offense. Ogham's one of the better blockers they have will actually serve right now. Well, that time Oregon does get the point. And a quick point to be made about Bricio, who has, of course, missed everything for, for USC. From no kills in the first set, Kevin, to seven in the second and seven again in the third. So the arrow's pointing up for number two on USC. There's a block, but it's Oregon's point. Block saying that they did not touch the ball. Mick Haley saying that we did not touch the ball. The crowd saying that we didn't yeah. touch the ball, but the two people who really matter saying, really hard to tell right at that tape level. Well, of course, no replay at this level. Go to the Olympics, you'd be able to, to wind that back. Well, the fans are not digging that call at all. And back live, Oregon gets another point on a ball into the net. You know, I almost think that Mick Haley's got a point there. I, uh, that's four against for him tonight. Liz Brenner to serve it. Third all time in Oregon history in points. Into the net for her. And a rare service error for Oregon tonight. USC with twice as many. And both having different uh, vibes. You know, USC is going for aces, even though their coach may not like that, but they're much more aggressive. Warner at the net. Really is so impressed by Maggie Scott, the freshman setter for, for Oregon, and how quick she's able to run this offense. She's getting so many great opportunities for her hitters where they pretty much have to hit at an unformed block. How much can a setter really make the program or, or turn a program around? <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk about that in a second. Bricio, too strong. I mean, there are elite setters we're, out there, right? We, we talked to Coach, uh, I did, to Tim Nolan, USC's assistant coach. He said, you know, there's very few setters who can turn around a program. A lot of times you're just looking for the band-aids, looking for people who won't hurt the program. But I'll tell you what, this freshman setter, Maggie Scott, she's a, she's a real deal. Boy, meantime, a little surprise ace for Oregon and a 7-2 lead for Oregon. So whatever momentum USC might have had winning that third set, it's gone. Ducks up 7-2. Oregon trying to take it here at USC, leading this fourth set 7-2. to There have been some exciting five-set matches all around the Pac-12 tonight. UCLA has just gone final with a win against Oregon State. So the Bruins now get to 5-3. and three. Michael Seeley's team overall at 14-5. and five. Well, It's a very thick mid-pack here, right, in the, in the Pac-12. Just the parody and, and the easy wins back in the day, the walkovers, Oregon State, they're not so easy anymore. Oregon State coming here to USC, you'll see it. Many of you will on Pac-12 Networks on Sunday. USC has won 29 sets in a row against Oregon State. This is a very different breed out of that particular state though. These Oregon Ducks looking to sweep, well not sweep, but get a 3-1 a, a win here. They're out to an 8-2 lead in set number four. Had a chance for that sweep. Couldn't quite stick the landing. Wow, what a dig. I think Wanabu was the most surprised of all. 
This time trying to hammer it instead of feather it. And it didn't quite work out. You know, because Oregon's offense is so fast, they're used to a lot of these weird reaction plays. And, and all the weird plays, all the out-of-system plays, they really seem to have an advantage on that. Wanabu finds that hole. Love that shot. Love that shot from her, right? When, when, you, when you play Oregon, Kevin, I don't mean to, to interrupt you. I'm, just, I'm, I'm curious. Because they're so unconventional, does that take you off your game going forward, or do you quickly move on just right, like right. that? Right, you can never settle in because you're always feeling like you're late. You're always feeling like you're guessing. They really keep you off balance. But can you hit the refresh button? I mean, for example, for Sunday, I mean, Oregon State comes in a little bit more conventional, right? You're hoping you're going to hit it right now before Sunday. Parisio into the nest. And again, does not have an ace tonight after getting eight against Utah last time out. Really looks like she's forcing, too. Really, you know, just in that happy sweet spot last week, having a hard time getting her way back. Ashen with the serve. The kills have not been there for Gillis tonight. Up near the scoreboard, it's over. Gillis still can't put one away. But she's working at it. Well, what a rally. Gillis tries again. Oh, Mick Haley's going to freak out. Nia Crittenden gets credit for the point, and Mick Haley is screaming no. <laughs> wow. Seems like every one of these has gone against USC tonight. I didn't see any touch at all there. Mick Haley said, hey, this is my home court, right? I'm at my home court. These are my fans. What is going on? Really been impressed by Oregon, this sports set. They could have easily folded. They could have easily said, we should have won the match already. But fighting it off, I do not see a touch on that at all. The Bluebirds are out in Galen Center. Boy, and you don't see Mick Haley turn that particular shade of crimson that often. Oh my God! He just he can't believe it. Doing a slow burn over there. And Oregon out to a 12-3 lead. I love the way that Frankie Chevy plays volleyball. Passes well. You see the swing block solo on the. Left side. A lot to like about Oregon right now as they're up nine in the fourth set here at SC. It's a top ranked women's volleyball team. Haley is still minutes later not pleased about a call from moments ago. Oregon's up 13 to three. I don't think he's moved positions. I don't think he's changed facial expression. There might be a little bit of a touch up there. Maybe, maybe. But five close calls, every one of them going against you at home. And USC, after hitting 366 in the third set, rallying to take that set. How about one kill against four errors in this fourth set? They're hitting a negative 176. <laughs> and Oregon has raced out to a 10-point advantage here. And after a much needed timeout, the Trojans get a very, very needed point. Really impressed with the middle attacker. Schreier hitting eight kills, 500. Ogum's going for 385, six kills, getting a lot of productivity in the middle. The deep dig strikes again. You see her going up with the open hand. You see the defender charging the net like you've been trained since you're 13 years old, but going deep and finding the court. Nady with 
with some power. Casey Nady, the cousin of Xavier Nady, the baseball player. It must be fun playing for Oregon. You know, running all the varied offense, nothing gets stale, nothing gets boring. You really have free reign to do whatever you want out there. And even though we focus on Liz Brenner, and she's an amazing athlete, I think your point is so well taken about the balance. If you go to Oregon, you know that you're going to be certainly in the, the midst of everything they're doing. And, and every coach wants balance, but the, the difference is that Oregon passes well enough so that they can run all the different options. They pass well enough so that they're in tempo, in system, and right now USC's not passing that well. Pizza Segola to serve it away. A block at the net. Benson sets it up. Brenner couldn't put it away. Wow, great dig. And a point to USC. <laughs> And Mick Haley's shaking his head because I think he thought he was going to get another bad call. You see him <laughs> on the sideline. They got the call. They made the great play. He's still shaking his head. He has not moved from that spot. It's like a well-dressed gargoyle over there. <laughs> Ooh, a little surprise to twist it over the net. Set it up, far side. And Oregon's point as Brenner gets the credit. She ranks second in the Pac-12 in double-doubles. This will be her 12th one tonight, it appears. Played a little beach volleyball in last year's spring season, and that time showing the little line cuff. Pretty close to the line again. I was surprised I didn't see you out there earlier. They got the sand volleyball <laughs> right. tournament going on outside. Yeah, that's because I, I only own blue and gold. Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you're not welcome on that sand. <laughs> I'm actually going to go check it out tomorrow. Yeah, they've got a lot of legends of the sport. They've got Olympians. They've got gold medalists coming out, NCAA champions. That's homecoming weekend for USC. Misty May Trainer, three-time gold medalist. She was out there today. Warner had it returned. 15-8 Oregon. 16-8 Oregon. And Remember one, they, uh, I'm sorry, Kev. And once again, USC chasing on defense. They're always one step late. This ball going out, Ogum's late to the party. Young late to the party on the outside as well. Liz Brenner, a multi-sport star. Young had it smacked back. Riccio had it deflected out of bounds, so the point to USC. You talked about it. She got better as the match has gotten longer, just whether there's enough match left right. for her to get to her full point. Here's Ogums now for the Trojans. Again. Anna Schreer, the connection, two setters, 6 2 offense for both teams, and really all the setters in the middle is connecting very well tonight. Schreer had one of the top seven hitting percentages last year in the Pac 12, and strong again this year. Ooh, that one just belted onto the body of Ogums. And the range of Brenner. Hits the cross court, hits the seam, this time turning it down the line. Schreyer. You know, we talk so much about Bricio and so much about Wanabu, but she's an important player too, as Hannah Schreyer. The offense, the middle attack, Ogums and Schreyer being very effective tonight. You know, we saw that stat about Brenner, you look at the top double doubles in the conference, and it's typically setters because they get a lot of assists. Pretty much they're going to get one of the double doubles. But Brenner's right near the top of the list. Kills and digs, really a special player. Bettendorf with a kill that time. 
She's been having a, a wonderful season, hitting around 350, but it's been a slow night for her tonight. a little bit, but that's the great thing about having balance. That's the great thing about spreading the offense is if you can afford to have one player yeah. off on a given night. If you're USC, you're a big three, you've got to have every one of them on in order to win a match. Yeah, that's a great point. Oregon, we talked about it. At one point in this game, it had six different players between five and seven points. Right. <laughs> Grecio, the first ace for her all night. Staring down the down rep saying, I dare you to call that ball long. I dare you. I dare you. And sometimes with Bricio, once the first one comes, numbers two through five are close behind. <laughs> What a strong night for Frankie Chevy, huh? And, and that is what's crazy about Oregon. They are supposed to be out of system there, but they're still running it so fast, and, and it's mind-boggling because typically you don't pass well, you slow the offense down. Here, they're still forcing the issue, forcing the pace. Chelsea Ashen from Laguna Niguel. Another Southern Californian with the kill, Casey Nady. You know, a lot, a lot of the Californians are having strong nights tonight. We talked about Chevy, there's Nady, Ashen with the serve. And, and you think about it, these are, this is a program that a lot of California kids want to end up at. And you start thinking, well, hey, who's ha harboring grudges here in this match? Who was overlooked on the recruiting table? Oregon starting to feel it right now at 21-13 here in the fourth set. I'll tell you who might be thinking that, Frankie Chevy. Mizuno Long Beach, she's half an hour away from USC. This is a program that she may have wanted to go to. All Orange County first team out of high school. Wanabu had it returned, but USC will get the point. Three out of four sets, it's been Oregon 21-14. Amazing, the separation, the uh, just the clear disparity in, in offenses, really. Chevy. But she had 12 kills last Friday against the other Southern California school. So maybe there is something to, to what you're talking about. UCLA and USC both bearing the brunt uh, Frankie Chevy's right hand. The wrath of Chevy. <laughs> Knocked down by Lauren Gillis. You know, USC typically year in and year out, such a quality program. When they're down a little bit, and this is a little bit of a down year, you've got teams ready to take advantage of that. Isn't it nice, though, to be quote unquote down <laughs> right. and, and still have this much talent? Be a top 20 team when you're down. Some thunder behind that from Brenner. In the air for Nady. Gillis had a return. Crittenden, and there's Oregon getting closer. You know, you watch, and I've been focusing so much on the blocks not being ready to stop, but even when the block's ready, the defense hasn't had enough time to get to their proper spots as well. Amanda Benson, a sophomore. from Bricio, not having her best offensive night, not having her best serving night, but getting over and making that opportunity work for the young freshman, Gillis. All the runs have come for USC with Schmidt serving, it seems, tonight. 
But here's Brenner to say we're not going to see a run right now. In fact, we're going to see a, a match point for Oregon. Really a typical Oregon play all night long. The perfect pass, the quick offense to Brenner, and the hit to the seam because the defense, the block, isn't prepared. Two freshmen, two sophomores on the floor right now for Oregon. Ogums gets credit for the kill and cuts it down to 24-17. She'll go back to serve. Oregon took the first two sets, 25-16, 26-24. And the Trojans pulled out the third set by two. A smash by Bettendorf. And the Oregon Ducks take it to USC. They take it three sets to one. Battle of two top 20 programs here, Kevin, and Oregon earned this one tonight. What a statement match coming off a, a tough loss at UCLA. Chance of getting swept down here in Southern California on the home turf of USC, and really such an impressive performance from start to finish. USC now two and five at home this year. That's stunning. But Oregon ascending in the Pac-12, they're not really surprising anybody anymore. After they lost 3-1 to one to UCLA, they win against USC by that same count of 3-1. to one. You know, And again, balance, I think, kind of the, the catch word tonight. Balance so key, and then maybe resilience, too. That third set, you saw a coaching staff that wasn't happy. You saw an opportunity that was lost, but what they did was they responded. They were resilient, and that's something that is very tough. That's something that brings a lot of senior leadership, and uh, you got to look a lot at Liz Brenner for that. Well, with the leadership of the senior Brenner and a lot of great play from some younger players on that Oregon side, the Ducks win 3-1 to one is the final count tonight as number 10 Oregon beats number 18 USC. We'll wrap it up right now from the Galen Center in L.A. Again, that final 3-1 to one for the Ducks. For Kevin Wong and our entire Pac-12 Networks crew, this is Josh Lewin saying so long from USC. You've been watching Pac-12 Women's Volleyball on Pac-12 Networks. Good night, everybody. Previously on the drive.